Hello everyone and welcome. I had already filmed this but I forgot to press record so we'll try again. But anyway, welcome to my review of The Walking Dead Season 10 Episode 14. I won't be holding back on any spoilers as is the norm with all my videos. So without further ado, let's begin for the second time today. Well, more than that when you count in the times I've had to reshoot it. But anyway, let's just get on with it. I'm pleased to say that Look at the Flowers is a lot better than the last instalment. However, I do still feel that this episode leans way too heavily on nostalgia and overused ideas for it to be considered a truly good episode of The Walking Dead. Now, it's certainly not as bad as some of the episodes that I've watched, but... It's nowhere near the best of The Walking Dead. It's just okay, I guess. I mean, it's an okay watch, but it's not going to be an episode that I really remember much about after this season is finished. So I'll start with what I liked first, and I enjoyed the flashback scene at the start of the episode in which Carol came into contact with Negan in his cell, and she basically offered him freedom if he went and killed Alpha. Now, I'd actually forgotten that up until this point we haven't had an explanation as to how Negan escaped his cell. If I remember correctly, one episode he's in his cell, and in the next he's just outside Alexandria wandering around with that weird creepy dude who's obsessed by him so I'm glad that we got an explanation and I'm glad that it doesn't contradict anything that has happened previously and that it fits in with the narrative and that it all makes sense and it shows that this sort of team up between Cow and Negan has been planned for quite some time and yeah I think it's clever and I enjoyed it. I also enjoyed the conversation itself that took place between Cow and Negan. I liked how Negan expressed concern that if he messed things up and you know if he didn't kill Alpha then Alpha would retaliate and Alexandria would be the ones who would suffer because of that because it showed that he does care about the community and the people within it. I think if he had just sort of bitten Carol's hand off and said right yep I'm doing it then it would have just made me think oh hang on he just wants to get out of his cell he doesn't actually care so I think it was good that he asked questions and I think it once again goes a long way to help humanizing Negan and we've seen a lot of that lately and yeah I think it's a good thing. I also liked how after the flashback scene when Carol and Negan were in the present Carol brings up something that I know a lot of you said in the comments of my episode 12 video and that was well why did it take you so long Negan and this is something that is also brought up by Dow later on in the episode it's a completely valid point and Negan offers quite a simple answer really he just says well I didn't want to die I had to take my time didn't I now normally I think that I'd be completely all over this answer I'd be jumping over it and saying this is a cop out this is such a shit answer blah 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 but you know what I actually buy it I'm actually okay with it and I'm gonna explain why so I mean let's think about it for a moment the whispers have done some pretty messed up shit even compared to the stuff that the saviors did and here Negan was behind enemy lines tasked with taking down their leader and I completely understand that here he was on his own undercover that he might be a bit scared of killing Alpha in case someone else sees it so he had to kind of plan it perfectly as it were I'm sure there were probably times where he might have had a chance to kill Alpha a bit sooner but he might have thought, oh, if I do it now, you know, what if I get killed? He might have just gotten cold feet. And I think that's actually quite reasonable, to be honest. And let's not forget that Carol was actually the only one who knew about his mission. So it's not as if he could have just met someone from Alexandria at the border and said, hey, things are going wrong. Can I have a bit of help here? Because no one else was in the know. He was truly on his own. And if he messed it up, then he would have died and no one else in Alexandria would have been would have been sorry any the wiser. So yeah, it might seem like a bit of a simple answer of him to just say, well, didn't want to die, but I actually think it's quite acceptable and surprisingly I'm okay with it. Of course I completely understand where Daryl was coming from when he says that, you know, you took too long, Hilltop burnt down, there were kids there that could have died. And Negan does sort of expand a bit upon his answer by saying that he did enjoy the power that came with being a member of the Whisperers. He enjoyed feeling useful, which I can appreciate because the dude has spent seven years in a cell staring at a wall. Also, like I said in my episode 12 review, it might have been that he did develop some genuine feelings towards Alpha and maybe saw a bit of his ex-wife in her. So again, that might have made it a bit hard for him to kill her. And to be honest, yeah, I kind of I'm okay with the explanation that was given as to why Negan took so long in killing Alpha. I like the surprise pairing of Daryl and Negan together. I kind of sympathise with Negan a bit when he went to find Lydia and she wasn't there. And then when he went back to the border and Alpha's head wasn't there because it does seem like of late whenever Negan tries to do something good he never quite gets the credit for it. And yet, you know, here again he was 
telling Daryl all, all of these good things that he'd done and there was no evidence for it. So I did feel a bit sorry for the dude. Despite the fact that I enjoyed Negan and Daryl spending time together, I do have to say that I saw him betraying the Whisperers who wanted him to be their new alpha coming from a mile away. I mean, why would Negan throw away everything he'd done and randomly kill Daryl just because a couple of Whisperers want him to be their leader? I mean, there's no guarantee that the rest of the Whisperers would fall in line anyway, so he might just ended up with these three as his followers. And even if he did somehow get the rest of the Whisperers in line and became the leader of the whole group, he would still then have a war with Alexandra on his hands because they'd want revenge for Daryl's death. And yeah, it would just be more bloodshed and it would be kind of pointless. And you know, even though Negan said that he did enjoy the moment of power with the Whisperers and he seemed to enjoy the power he had over Daryl in that moment as well, I kind of think that he's done being a leader, he's passed that, he's tried, he failed, a lot of people died, you know, he's been in prison. I don't think he wants that anymore. He wants to be part of Alexandria, which has been proven by the various good deeds that he's done over the last season and a bit. So, yeah, I think it was obvious that he wasn't going to kill Daryl because it wouldn't have made any sense at all for him to do so. But despite that, it was still quite a cool scene. The main issue that I have with the Negan and Daryl scenes is when... Negan mentions to Daryl why Alpha had to die and he brings up two reasons. The first being that she kills innocent people, which you shouldn't do. And the second being that you don't kill kids. Now, unfortunately, because of some of the dumb decisions that were made during the All Out War saga of the show, this isn't quite consistent with what Negan's done previously. I mean, first off, when he says, oh, we don't kill innocent people, Negan has killed a lot of innocent people. And in fact, he's used to instruct the saviors to kill innocent people rather than the guilty people. I mean, think back to when Rosita tried to shoot him. He didn't kill Rosita. He told one of the saviors to kill a random person and they ended up killing Olivia. Now, I don't think you could say Olivia was guilty. She didn't do anything. So him saying, oh, you don't kill innocent people, that's just bullshit because that's what he used to do. When people stood up to Negan, it was often that they didn't get punished, but other people did. I mean, the same thing happened when Daryl punched him. It wasn't him who got killed, it was Glenn. And then there are often times when people did attack him that he actually tried to recruit them. I mean, think about when Sasha went into his base and she tried to get him on side. Or Carl goes in and guns down a load of people and instead of killing him, he just says, oh, you know, he thinks he's like a cool kid and sends him back to his dad. So yeah, I don't buy this whole you don't kill innocent people shtick because he's done that a lot. And the second point when he says you don't kill kids, I appreciate that Negan has done a lot for Judith and Lydia, but let's go back to the season seven finale, which I do try and pretend isn't canon. He was about to bash Carl's brains in, but was only stopped by a bloody jumping tiger. So you can't say you don't kill kids when you're about to kill Carl. I mean, again, unfortunately, I think this conversation suffers because of some of the dumb choices that were made in the past. And I think if Angela Kang was on board, she wouldn't have made these choices. But unfortunately, because of what Negan has done previously, it isn't consistent with what he's trying to say. Now, I know the show is almost trying to pretend that season seven and eight kind of didn't happen and trying to make us forget that. But they did. Negan has killed innocent people. He did try and kill a kid. So, yeah, I can't really buy what he's saying, unfortunately. Aside from Negan, Eugene was the other character that I really liked this episode. I enjoyed his speech when he rounded everyone up and explained who he was talking to and sort of poured his heart and soul into his speech, saying that he believed in hope and finding new people and friends and that sort of thing. And I think normally this is the type of speech that I would have found quite cringe-inducing, but I actually felt what he was saying. I believed it. And yeah, I found it quite moving, surprisingly. So yeah, I thought it was quite a nice speech by Eugene. So now we come to the bad stuff, and I'm sure that this isn't going to surprise anyone when I say that I didn't care for Carol's little trip in the woods where she was talking to an imaginary alpha. This whole subplot felt completely pointless. It didn't really achieve anything. She just ran off, talked to Alpha for a bit in her head, got trapped under a house, then escaped and went back to Alexandria complete waste of time in my opinion and you know I said in the last video that there's been too many hallucinations and visions of late in The Walking Dead and yet again we have another scenario where a character is talking to someone in their head and they're seeing things and it's just not needed you know as much as I enjoy Samantha Morton as Alpha on the show she only died two weeks ago why are we bringing her back already in someone's head why is she here torturing Carol just l let her be please I don't need to see this so yeah I just thought it was a waste of time, I didn't enjoy it, and I'm hoping that 
the last two episodes will stop with the annoying dream visions stuff. Just stop, please. I also wasn't really a fan of the beta stuff. I mean, yeah, it was cool to learn that he was previously a country music singer in the past, and I did think the scene when all the walkers were surrounding him like some kind of concert was quite a cool was quite cool visually but apart from that I don't think there needs to be that much focus on Beta as a character I mean he's not that interesting really he's not going to fill in the hole that Alpha has left he's just this big hulking menacing machine and that's what I want him to be a monster I don't need to have him be humanized or you know I don't need to find out more about him I just want him to be like like Nemesis in Resident Evil, he's just this unstoppable force that turns up out of nowhere, just kills people. I don't really need to see him drinking in a pub, talking to himself about some notes showing him the way or some shit like that. Yeah, I just don't need that. And did anyone else think it was really weird when he sort of picked up Alpha's head at the start of the episode and held it in his arms like a little baby and was like rocking a little head like, go to bed, good Alpha. Okay, that didn't quite happen, but still, yeah, that just made me think of he was cradling a kid that was really weird. And then later on in the episode when he did stab the walker head of Alpha with a knife, it was like a weird homage to Star Wars Episode 2 when he had the head towards her like when Boba Fett is holding his dad's helmet in Star Wars Attack of the Clones. Now I don't think anyone would intentionally ever make a homage to that film because it's terrible but yeah it just made me think of Star Wars so Maybe that says more about me, I don't know, but yeah, it was just weird just seeing him hold his head against Alpha's. I just thought, wow, oh, this is just like Boba Fett, this is weird. But anyway, I'm going to move on now. Now the last thing I want to talk about is that Princess turns up at the end. Yay. Now as a guy who's read the comics, I mean, she does look pretty much spot on, and she looks, you know, what I imagined her looking like, but it also seems like her personality is spot on, which shouldn't be a bad thing, but princess was so bloody annoying for me personally i found her so irritating in the comics and it looks like she's pretty much the same which yeah should be a good thing but yeah i don't know i never liked her in the comics i know she was kind of intentionally annoying that was the point but it still didn't stop the fact that she was just irritating and it looks like it's going to be the same in the tv show and i wonder how fans of the tv show will react to this especially those who haven't read the comics because it seems as if we are trying to get away from these over the top characters even though we have people walking around in walker masks. But yeah, it's like, you know, when we had sort of Ezekiel and his tiger and he's all over the top and, you know, I, I guess it took a while for people to get used to it and it helped that it was all an act. But now we've got Princess, who is this talkative sort of ADHD, really over the top character. And I don't know how people are going to react to it at all. I think there could be a lot of people who are like, fuck this, she's too irritating, but I don't know, maybe people will like her, maybe that's just me. But we'll see, I mean, I'll reserve judgement for now. Maybe. Not at all, I already hate her. But that's about it for this video, please let me know what you thought about this episode in the comments below. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Or, like me, did you just kind of think, oh, it was alright, it wasn't anything special, whatever your views, let me know below. And, as always, stay safe. Um, because, yeah, we're still living in crazy times and a lot of people are dying at the moment. So, yeah, look after yourself, everyone. And hopefully I shall see you all very soon. Take care. Goodbye.